This is Mustafa Amsil from Helsinki, Finland, and I play forward for UNM Lobos. And this is episode 76 for the Talking Grammar podcast. What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff Grammar with the Albuquerque Journal. And as you just heard there in the intro from Mustafa Amzil, the UNM Lobo forward, this is episode 76 now of the Talking Grammar podcast. And our guest today is Dayton Transfer, uh, UNM Lobo forward. Top forward off the bench now for the Lobos is Mustafa Amzil um, from Finland. And as I said, he did transfer from Dayton. Got off to a rough start this season and and has now quietly and maybe not so quietly uh, for anyone paying attention become a, a very key, very important part of this Lobo roster right now. And not only has he kind of turned his season around, he uh, has recently Steve Kirkland from UNM, the sports information director for the men's basketball team, uh, handed this note to me. Um, he is now scored four or in four consecutive games. He scored double digits off the bench for the Lobos. He is the first Lobo to score double digit points in four consecutive games off the bench in, in conference play since Alfred Neal did it in the 2003-2004 season for the Lobos. So this is uh, what he's doing now on this Lobo team is 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 not been done in two decades. So Mustafa Amzil um, came in with high expectations. Like I said, a rough start. Uh, I, I will actually kind of go over and I talk to him about his rough start with the season. And I'll go over some of those stats with you. Um, he did start over his first 10 games. He was only averaging 2.8 points per game. Hadn't scored in double figures in those first 10 games for the Lobos. He was 1 for 21 from three-point range. And uh, it's 4.8%. His uh, There were groans. The, the, the pit crowd um, was starting to... Um, kind of uh let him hear it a little bit whether some of them want to admit it or not uh there were groans when when some of those shots were going up and uh it kind of turned around after he he didn't even come off the bench in the new mexico state game down in las cruces and after that game the past eight games for the unm lobos mustafa Amzil has averaged 9.8 points per game he has scored in double digits six times in those eight games and he's 8 of 19 from three-point range. That's over 42%. That Those numbers are, are fantastic. Those are starter numbers. And uh, he's doing it off the bench. And he's also helping uh, fill key minutes and key moments and key stretches of the game at the five spot, at the center spot for, for Nelly Jr. Joseph, which allows JT Toppin to not have to play that five spot. The, the great freshman for the Lobos right now can, can still play his power forward, his number four spot on the roster. Um he can fill that role and continue to dominate as he's been doing. So Mustafa Amzil has been doing just great work after what was a pretty rough start. I, I appreciate him for talking, indulging me a little bit and talking about, um, you know, what it took to get out of that, which was basically, you know, nothing. Just trust the work you've put in for, for a long time. He's put hundreds of hours into the gym, into the work, and he, he sees those results and practices and, and working in the gym. So why change things too much when in a short, really small snapshot um, of, of five to 10 minutes of playing time on the court just happens to be where we all see it, the media and the fans. Um, why change things? Cause it's not working. Then he knew it was working. He kind of trusted the process, the old sports cliche now, and uh, he stuck with what he knew was working and, and it's come around for him. Um, he, he, he had some patience. He was getting frustrated, but, uh, he showed patience and now he's a, a huge part of what the Lobos are doing to succeed. As I record this, as this episode's about to come out, um, it is Monday, and a new AP poll came out, and the Lobos, riding a three-game win streak, are now the number 25-ranked New Mexico Lobos. They are ranked for the first time this season in the Associated Press Top 25 poll. Uh, the three-game win streak that they are on right now um, includes uh, an 18-point win over then number 19-ranked San Diego State. That was last weekend in a sold-out pit on CBS Sports. They then beat number 16 ranked Utah State by 13 points. They then go on the road, and while it's a last place Air Force team, um, they beat them on the road in conference play by 19 points. Same Air Force team that just took four days prior, Tuesday night in Fort Collins, took Colorado State to overtime. Uh, they were up on Colorado State by double digits at one point uh, with about six seconds to go, I think it was. Colorado State ties it in regulation, forces the over has to rally to force an overtime on their home court. And then they pull away from Air Force in the overtime. But um, that, that is an Air Force team that, when things are clicking, can can really 
um, give teams fits. And it uh, didn't happen Saturday against the Lobos. The Lobos are firing on all cylinders right now. Mustafa Amzil is a big part of that. Obviously, JT Toppin is a huge part of that. He had 25 points, 13 rebounds in the Air Force win Saturday. And today was named Mountain West Freshman of the Week. That sounds familiar. It should. Out of 10 possible Mountain West Freshman of the Week awards so far this season, JT Toppin is now, he has now received six of them. It might as well be, as I've said to others, it might as well be the the Mount, the JT Toppin Mountain West Freshman of the Week award should be named uh, in his honor. And uh, he has now won it six times. Obviously, no other player uh, in the league has won it that much. Uh, his teammate, True Washington, has won it one other time. So the Lobos have owned seven of the possible 10 uh, Mountain West Freshman of the Week awards this this season, and uh, he's he's kind of approaching um, unprecedented ground because while this award's only three years deep, the Mountain West didn't used to give a weekly freshman award. Um, three years ago, in the first year, Tyson Dagenhart, the the great big man for Boise State, who was a Player of the Year candidate this season. Um, when he was a freshman in the 2021-22 season, he won the Freshman of the Week award nine times. Well, now JT Toppin's on his, you know, hot on his tail there to uh, to maybe get nine himself this season. Um, what he also did Saturday with that 25-point, 13-rebound double-double, that's number six this season for JT Toppin as a freshman in terms of double-doubles. That's one off the UNM program record of seven for a freshman, seven double-doubles by Kenny Thomas in the 1995-96 season. He had seven as a freshman. JT Toppin is now one away from the Lobo freshman double-double record. He also now is keeping pace with the two best big men or the two of the three best big men in the league. I do think Dagenhart is in that category. But Greg Osavar from um, for Utah State, who came into the pit last week and, and lost in part because of JT Toppin's play. And Jaden Ledee, who um, is the All-America candidate for San Diego State, who just a week and a half ago came into the pit and, and lost, again, in part because of the front court play of JT Toppin and Nelly Jr. Joseph. Those two guys have, have kind of owned the league this year in terms of double-doubles. Overall this season, those two guys have nine double-doubles. JT Toppin is third in the league in double-doubles with six of them. In Mountain West play, just league versus league uh, play, it is a three-way tie for first place in terms of how many double doubles or the team le- or the the league leader rather in double doubles between Jaden Ledee, Great Osovar, and J T Toppin. All three of them have had three now in league play. So things are going good for J T Toppin. Things are going good for the Lobos. They were not the only Mountain West team uh, that was ranked today. Uh, when today's AP Top 25 poll did come out, uh, number Utah State, which as I mentioned just a while ago. Uh, was number 16 last week when they lost in the pit. Uh, kind of a sign of respect here. Despite that loss, they did bounce back and beat Fresno State pretty handily at home. And uh, so despite that loss in the pit, they only dropped two spots in the AP poll to number 18. Colorado State is also ranked. They're number 24 in the poll. The Lobos come in at number 25. They actually have a fairly comfortable, in terms of points, a comfortable lead over the top team that is not ranked, and that's Seton Hall this week. There are two other Mountain West teams that are in the others receiving votes category. That's San Diego State and Boise State. The, those are five teams receiving top 25 votes right now. The only reason it's not six is because Nevada had a really bad loss on Saturday to Wyoming. Um, otherwise, Nevada was getting points in the poll last week and the last couple weeks. Uh, this is a very good league. Um, they might get as many as some people think as many as six teams into the NCAA tournament. I think it might get four or five. I don't think it'll get six, but I do think it'll get four or five. I don't think it'll get below four at this point. And, uh, right now the mountain West, um, or right now, some of the, the NCAA bracket projections show the UNM Lobos comfortably in one that came out today on the field of 68 has them as an eight seed. The last teams that get in as an at large team in in the field are usually in the either 11 or 12 kind of playing round range in that spot right there and um they had you know field of 68 today had the lobos as an eight seed so things are looking good uh the net rankings the new net rankings that came out today unm was 24th in the country um number one was san diego in the mountain west was san diego state at number 20 so four top 30 net rankings belong to mountain west teams I think things are looking pretty good for this for this league, but there's some tough games coming up uh, for the Lobos in particular this week. They have a road game at San Jose State and on Wednesday night, and then they have the, the big game Sunday night. Uh, Steve Alford and Craig Neal are coming to town with the Nevada Wolfpack for a Sunday night game in the pit 
Um, again, nationally televised. That one will be on FS1, I believe that one is. And uh, that, that'll be telling. Uh, remember, Nevada and Keenan Blackshear, the last second buzzer beater, beat the Lobos in the pit last year. And right now, since Steve Alford is coached at Nevada, I think he's in his fifth year already, fourth or fifth year already, um, fifth season, he's not yet lost to the UNM Lobos. The only team, Richard Patino, who's only in his third year, um, has not beaten in the Mountain West is Nevada. So a lot of things riding on that game, including potential postseason implications. Uh, this win for either team could really help solidify a postseason resume. And I think it's big for that reason, but obviously for Lobo fans and a lot of people in these parts, it's it's much bigger because of the coaches on that other bench. For right now, though, uh, let's get to this conversation I had today with Lobo forward Mustafa Amzil. I keep saying his name. I, I, I've all season called him Mustafa Amzil. I do ask him a little bit about the pronunciation. Um, he, he, he doesn't care if you call him Mustafa or Mus- Mustafa. Um, I, I do believe, though, it is more correct to call him Mustafa Amzil. And um, again, we get into that a little bit. We get into a lot. He was, he was pretty open, pretty candid. So um, hope you enjoyed this conversation with UNM Lobo forward Mustafa, Mustafa Amzil. First of all, Mustafa, appreciate you for being on. I'm going to start right at the beginning here. I know you just got out of a practice. Um, you guys, as we record this today on Monday, you guys are coming off a win at Air Force, a road win in conference play. I know where they are in the standings, but a road win in conference play is always a big thing. Um, and you guys are preparing for San Jose State. So that's where people watching or listening to this, um, that's where we are right now in terms of uh, the week. Um, you guys just got out of practice. You just introduced yourself uh, to the listeners. And I had asked you once this summer, I think when you first got here, um, how you pronounce your first name, because to me, it looks like Mustafa is how I would say it. I know I look at past highlights um, when you were at Dayton last year and, and the PA announcer there, or at least in the, the A-10, uh, the championship tournament that I was looking at some, some YouTube clips, he would pronounce it Mustafa. Um, a, a lot more like that. So what is the preferred pronunciation of your first name? Mustafa. Mustafa. Okay. So I'm saying that wrong. I've been kind of saying it wrong. Now I'm a writer. I don't have to actually ever say it. I just get to yeah. write it. But, but Mustafa, more of a yeah. Mustafa than a Mustafa. Yeah. It's like Mustafa. Yeah, Mustafa is more of an English way of saying it. That's more of the Americanized kind of yeah. way, right? Yeah, definitely. It's because Mustafa is like... Mustafa, the way my name is written to a PHA is kind of English way, so Mustafa. But either way, I don't really mind. You've been in Albuquerque now uh, a few months, obviously, since summertime. Um, you, you committed last spring, but you've been here since summer. Um, how, you know, how, I guess, comfortable are you here in Albuquerque now that you've been here um, since summertime? Are you getting accustomed to the food, the, the restaurants, the places around town? And how different is it than Helsinki? Uh, I do. I do like it. I like it. It's it's nice. Nice town, uh, city. I get to go, you know, uptown, downtown, by the school, you know, a lot of different places. So I like it. But I, I door dash a lot of my food. So I yeah. don't move around too much. But um, whenever I go outside, it's, it's, it's nice. People are nice. So. I have no problems in season two, I imagine. And and this, I mean, it probably applies a little bit more to international players than, than just players from around the United States, but like you, you got to make sure you're eating something that, you know, you're a little familiar with and, and uh, you got to make sure you, you can't get sick and you're eating healthy food too. It's, it's, it's easy to run to a fast food restaurant and just grab some of that junk all the time. But um, I imagine you guys all try and during the season, try and eat pretty well. Yeah, definitely. It's a big part of, you know, being basketball, just, you know, like practicing your skills just to keep it, keeping your body right, making sure everything is good. So, especially on game days, I just eat, you know, some pasta, some chicken alfredo, you know, some easy stuff that I'm used to and not, not trying too much that chili stuff. But uh, yeah. other than that, I do, do, you know, like to try new things. You uh, what Do you have a go-to game day? Is it is it a pasta? You said alfredo. Is that every game or – that's almost yeah, almost every game. That's usually what we get from the team too, is chicken alfredo. Uh, but you know, it depends. If we're on the road, it's a little bit different. Sure. If there's some spots, you know, 
like in Colorado, there was a little, some new spots on DoorDash I was able to order here. So I tried them sometimes. Do you have any game day routines um, that that are kind of unique to you? Is, is it one kind of music you listen to? I'm going to get to you on music here in a minute because I saw a, a video where, where people, some of your teammates were, were take. So we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. But um, do, do you listen to the same kind of music? Do you listen? Is there a movie you watch? There's some meditation you do. What what do you do on game day? Or is it just kind of roll with the punches, do, you know, whatever, just get ready? Uh, trying to you just take it easy, usually, before the game. Uh, I have, you know, we have the shooter on. I'm, I'm trying to always have a nap, like sleep a little bit between shooter on and the game. First, I go I go to the arena two hours before, get some shots yeah. up, work on my game a little bit. Uh, but just, you know, music is, I try to listen to it up tempo music you know some hype hype stuff get me fired up and then just you know the nap that's basically just what i do everything else it's just whatever comes to mind all right if somebody around is walking around your your guys locker room right now and they're asking who plays the best music and who plays the worst music and i ask you this because i already saw on social media some some of your teammates said that you have some crazy music that you like I imagine to you it's just normal music, but like, what did you see that clip? I, I think it was. I seen it. I definitely seen it. <laughs> but I think there's haters. I play a lot of, <laughs> I play a lot of music from back home. Finnish music, you know, they obviously they don't like it. I play some UK UK rap too. You know, it's English, but they still don't understand it. And uh, you know, it's just some some of them like it, some of them you know don't, but. But I still do my thing, you know, when I get the aux, nobody telling me that I can't get the aux. So, so so I just try to play play whatever. How is that? How you said the aux, like when who how do you guys rotate that? Who gets the aux? Who who is it the first one back to the locker room after a practice? Like how do you guys rotate that? Who who's in charge of the music? It's usually whoever gets it first. Uh especially like in the weight room when we play music. On the road, Q got the aux a lot of times. Uh but I don't know that the speaker would be kind of quiet on his phone. So there's some problems on his phone. So I think we're gonna switch it. But yeah. But uh it's just whoever is first. All right. Nobody else is here to disagree with you. So I'm gonna ask you the, the music question. Who on this Lobo basketball team um plays the best music? I I'll, I'll take you out of the equation, okay? So you have to pick somebody else. Who plays the best music? Who plays the worst music? Worst, uh, let me just start with worst. Worst is definitely um let me think, let me think. Uh worst, uh true, true plays worst. True. Okay. Yes. He plays a lot of Detroit rappers. I don't like Detroit <laughs> rappers. Uh and best music, that's a. Uh, I'd say probably Draje. I like Draje. Okay. Yeah. Draje, listen type of same type of music I do. So you came here from obviously from Dayton. Um, I'm gonna get to uh the Dayton time in a minute, but how did you get into basketball and um in, in Finland? Did did your family play it? Did were you playing from as long as you can remember, or what got you into basketball? Um I I always play sport. I always like sports. I played soccer first. I started with soccer. And my mom, when she was young, she played basketball, but she says she was a bench warmer, so it don't really count, you know. She quit after a couple of years. But um so I was playing soccer. Uh because my dad influenced me, of course. I liked soccer, but as Moroccan, you know, Morocco is a big soccer country. So yeah. I played soccer for seven years and then in on the first grade when I was seven years old, uh I I noticed that all my teammates started playing basketball. So I was like, Mom, Dad, can I go try try the sport? And they said, Yeah, of course. And uh that's you know, I just fell in love with the sport, grew taller, didn't have too much time to play both soccer and basketball. So I was like, I'm a little bit better in basketball and I'm tall, so I should continue playing basketball. How good were you at soccer? I was pretty good. I was left midfield, you know, I like to uh, kick like those long balls to to the strikers. Uh, that's that was my favorite thing. But uh, I was pretty good, I would say, for for my height. And I know you guys are. There are plenty of you on this team that are gamers too. Do you guys play FIFA? Yeah, I, I'm not actually a big FIFA fan. I like to play soccer more than watch. But uh, I I I would I would say 
person who doesn't play FIFA, I beat them. But there's there's like Ike. Ike plays a lot of FIFA. I think Nelly plays FIFA. But you House, don't. House is a huge FIFA fan. Okay. That's the end. Yeah. House likes that baseball game too, right? He, he plays. He plays, he, he plays a lot of sports games, right? Yeah, yeah, he does. He he yells. I don't know how the baby sleeps. In his <laughs> What's your go to on gaming? Uh, probably right. Two K is always if if I had to, you know, beat somebody, I say two K. I play Fortnite recently. A lot of Fortnite, but two yeah. K is my game. All right, so we'll we'll uh, again. I, I promise we're going to get to basketball, but if we're talking about this team. Who's the best? And, and and managers can be in the mix. Yeah, I don't know if any of the staffers or coaches um play too, but who uh who's beating you at Fortnite? Anybody? Donnie. I'll give it to Donnie. All right. He is gonna get you at Fortnite. Yeah, Donnie is a Fortnite nerd. He's not even <laughs> All right. So you you're into basketball from from a young age then. And how did you get into uh with the junior national team there in Finland? How did how did that kind of come about? Uh, they kind of, you know, invite a lot of like top players in each class to the camp. Uh, I remember when I was like 14, I got my first invitation, play with under 15, like a year older Yeah. Uh, in a group. So I got to the camp, you know, uh, it's in, it's like, I, I lived because when I was 14, I lived hour away from Helsinki. So the camp was like three hours away, but, um. So we went to the camp, just did good in the camp, got invited to the next camp, and so on and so on. That's basically how how I got in. So I see, like on the roster, I I said you're from Helsinki. Are you are you you're actually from outside Helsinki? Yeah, I'm actually outside, like hour and fifteen maybe. Where it's from? Kotka. It's like K O T K A. Kotka. It's spelling, yeah. So originally I'm from there. I moved there to Helsinki for basketball. And now you got brothers and sisters that play some basketball too, right? Yeah, my sister, she plays at Detroit Mercy, near to Detroit Mercy. And my brother, he plays back at home in, in Helsinki. He's a older brother, sister's a younger sister? No, sister is older. Sister is older. Yeah, and brother is uh, four years younger. So I had, I had it reversed. Um, how, okay, so who's the best basketball player of the three siblings then? Me, definitely me. She's not going to beat you. Your older sister's not going to disagree. No, 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 no. She, my, my older sister, she losing to my old, young brother now too, and she, she, she takes it. But, but my brother is coming up. But nobody beating me. All right. Um, you, uh, when you committed here, when you did the transfer, um, yeah. you told me about. Uh, I think you said high school coach. Uh, Hano, and I would always say Matala. So yeah. you, you pronounce it the right way. I'll pronounce it the wrong way. But um, people here in 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 Lobo Land um, in Albuquerque certainly remember those late '90s Utah Utes teams and the team that went to the national championship. Uh, Rick Majerus's team. Their center was was your high school coach from Finland. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, tell me, uh, share with the people watching this, kind of what he had told you about the pit. Uh, I remember when. I was arguing with him a little bit about my recruitment. He wasn't heavily involved right. with my recruitment, but uh, when I committed, he said, congrats on the commitment, played in the pit. That's a nice place to play. It gets loud there. Hope you enjoy basically what he said. So he remembers the pit as a tough place to play. You have had now a couple games this season uh, where the pit did get pretty full and did get pretty loud. Even the games that aren't sold out, there's been a couple times it's gotten pretty loud. Is it is it what you kind of thought when people sort of hyped up the pit? I know in a recruitment, people hype up everything, right? And and sometimes it lives up to it, sometimes it doesn't. Mm. It, is the pit, especially maybe the last couple games where where ranked teams came in here and maybe the New Mexico State game where it was a rivalry, did did the volume get up to what you had uh, thought it would be? Yeah, definitely. It's it's loud. It's loud. I played in played in a lot of a lot of yeah. arenas in college basketball. And I definitely, you know, even though I played for here, but it is definitely one of the best places to play at. And um it gets loud. It's it's not even like some places you get loud for like a short period of time or if the team does good or something, but then it drops and comes up. But pit is like consistently loud. So I think that's that's a difference. I can tell, I mean, from having covered the the Lobos for for 12 seasons now at the journal, um, I I can tell that this year after games when I'm sitting in it the, the whole time and then I'm writing my stories afterwards, 
I, I can feel it in my ears a little bit more after some games this year. So I know it's getting back to what it used to be. And, yeah. and you guys are, you guys are a big part of that. You guys are having a good season. Um, you, you guys had some good seasons at Dayton too, though. Uh, when you decided to come here, you, you played there. Um, I, I will go to one game specifically and you know, which one it's going to be, but November 26, 2021, you guys are playing Kansas and you guys are down one in, it was one of the ESPN tournaments. I, I can't remember what, yeah. tournament it was it actually was the invitational it's yeah it was the espn invitational with the yeah. espn in the name of it yeah okay so you guys are playing kansas and you guys are you guys are down 73 72 and about under 10 seconds to go do you do you remember the play enough to walk us through it uh i do actually it was it was i i was on the bench actually and i was like coach like we might need the three like come in and then coach saw me in and uh we run, I remember the play, uh, we we ran two, it's called one hook. Uh, I was in the corner, and then uh, our point guard drove to the basket. He got blocked by McCormick, I think is the big man, blocked him. I got the ball. I, I see the ball come towards me. And I, was, I just got it. I see this like four seconds on the clock or something. I'm driving to the middle, uh, and I was, I was thinking about passing it up, and so there was – I forgot who was running up wide open at the three, but I was like, ah, let me shoot this and uh, shot it and went in. It was awesome. Awesome. It, it, and it was like kind of a floater, you know, I guess as I'm looking at it right to left through the lane and you kind of, you're, you're fading to the left. It, it wasn't like you were exactly squared up, but a little off balance and, and it goes through, obviously you guys upset Kansas um, 74, 73. And, and it was a true buzzer beater. I mean, balls in the air, buzzer goes off. And uh, come from behind buzzer beater too. So uh, that's one of those memories I know that'll stick with you forever. But I'm curious after that, how many people just, you know, how your phone blows up and, and how many people like me, even a couple of years later, like are still asking you about th that moment. I mean, it's definitely, you know, good memory. One of the big, biggest basketball memories I have, but I remember who I was roommate with. I put the, uh, I was like, look at this. I turned my volume up on my phone. I was like, <laughs> It was phone almost blew up, but uh, all night it was all night. It was it was it was fun though. You know you don't get to experience too many of those. So yeah, I enjoyed it a little bit. All right, you find your way to Albuquerque. Um, what what made you decide to to come join and be be a Lobo this year? Um, the program, you know, trending up. To, uh, Coach Patino doing a good job. Uh, playing faster pace. You know, uh, I think we had the good players, good pieces. I I could fit in. And I think, you know, I, I was thinking we're going to have one of the best teams in the country, and I think we do. You guys, you, uh, and I've asked you about this, and you, you've been you've been good about answering it. It's it's kind of a, uh, it got to be annoying to have to answer uh, reporters that ask questions like this all the time, but you did start off with a slump. Um, you, you, you had a slow start uh, to the season here, especially from the outside. Um, it's turned around, but I want to start with the, with the beginning. How frustrating did things get when, when, you couldn't see one of those threes fall for, for seven, eight games. I mean, was, I know you would hit one, so it wasn't like none had hit, but it was it was a pretty bad stretch there from outside. Yeah, I, I, it was exhibition game when I hit the three, and then I hit three against St. Mary's. But, of course, you know, I know I'm a shooter. I know I can shoot the ball. So when I'm not able to do it in the game consistently, not be able to, you know, help the team that way, it's frustrating, of course. But at the end of the day, you've, Gotta gotta um remember who I am, remember, you know, work I put in. It's just confidence, you know, keep working hard, basically. That I mean, that's maybe the biggest thing I think for high level athletes, right? Is like we all look at results, reporters, fans, we all just look at what's happening on the court on game day and, and the difference sometimes between high level athletes and, and us is yeah. that you guys have to trust that, like, you didn't just put in two hours on game night. You've put in a whole week. You've put in however many hours, and, and you have to trust that all that other stuff is who you are. It's not just that that moment at the game. And um, so how hard is it, though, um, when, again, when when the thing that all of us see is the, is the rough part, you, you still kept confidence through that whole stretch. In your mind, you still kept confidence that these are going to fall eventually. 
The, yeah, uh, it's of course, you know, when I'm shooting, I had a little, you know, I wouldn't say doubt, but, you know, it was in my well, mind. Fresh, well, probably frustration, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every time, you know, I'm shooting, I'm missing. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I didn't know what to do because I worked in, in practice. I'm making these shots, but then it's starting to affect practice too a little bit. But just, you know, there's not too much to do. Just, you know, keep working, keep getting shots up. That's, you know, that's what turned things around. Well, for those that uh, haven't been following closely, I do. I, I will say that over your last eight games, um, you are now averaging nine point eight points. You've had six double figure games. You're you're eight of nineteen from three point range. That's over forty two percent. And uh, one note that Steve Kirkland gave, um, I will tip my cap to him for this. You've now scored double digits off the bench in four consecutive games. It's the first time that a Lobo has done that in four consecutive conference games since the 2003, 2004 season. So what you're doing right now isn't, isn't just, um, you know, kind of catching back up to, to maybe a slow start. You're a big time contributor to this team and you're getting some boards and uh, you're, you're doing it you're spelling Nelly a lot at the five. And, and that's another thing I had asked you about earlier this year, how comfortable you are playing the five, but you're, you're stepping into a pretty big role here kind of uh midway through the season and 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 you know kudos to you man you 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 did shake off a bad start now you're a big part of this team is it a lot more satisfying when you know that again you trust what you're doing in practice but you know that stat sheet at the end of the day shows that you had a pretty big piece of a lot of these recent wins yeah definitely you know that's at the end of the day basketball is you know when i get on the court i just don't want to run around i want to yeah. you know produce and make a make an impact in the game so yeah, I feel like I can still play better. I feel like I'm like getting into it, you know. I feel like uh, if this is you know the beginning. Uh, at the end of the day, that's why I came here. I'm able to produce and help the team win. So I think I think uh, it's not just something that happens for for these four or five games. I think it'll be it'll be going up even even more towards the end of the season. I can tell too that from again from my dance just watching you guys it seems like you're having a little more fun with it because i think if i'm not mistaken i've seen a couple have, have i seen a couple after a little yeah but I, I couldn't do it after one or two makes you know i had to wait till i start hitting them you know so i can be myself again <laughs> how long have yeah. you been doing that uh i've been doing it for a while yeah. i think Every, every year I've been in college, I do the bow and arrow yeah. sometimes. So, yeah. but, but you knew after the first couple, you, you you had some ground to make up before you could pull it out again. Yeah, yeah, I had to. I had made my first two. I don't think I even did anything. I, don't, I didn't do any celebration on my first couple yeah. ones. I think but, that yeah. first one you made after that long stretch of, of kind of struggling, didn't yeah. it hit the rim, rim, backboard rim? Wasn't that the one that? Yeah, that was the one I was like, oh, finally, one, one of those. Going, <laughs> one but... finally went in, right? Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I had Steve actually ask you about this last week, but um for, for people watching you on the free throw line and, and the numbers are good man like there, there's no denying the numbers are just fine so it's working but I, I for fans that watch you shoot free throws you are off to the right yeah when, when did that start how did it start because it blew my mind when when Steve told me what your answer was to that um how long have you been shooting a little bit off centered and uh, how, how did it start it's it's been a, a while I think it started somewhere in high school at least when I noticed it uh, like freshman year, sophomore year, when, when I was told that, why do you shoot so much on the on the on the side? And I said, what do you mean I shoot on the side? I always thought I was in the middle because I put my left leg in the in the middle kind of, and I was like, oh, and okay, kinda, yeah. yeah, and then move like sideways. So I was like, okay, but I don't know. It just goes in and it's comfortable, so I, I don't want to change anything. That's true. When you go shoot a free throw, right? You're you're kind of looking down and and setting your feet to to where you want your feet to be. So if you're lining up that that left foot all the time, exactly where you want it to be, and then once you look up, you probably don't even realize that you kind of shift over a little bit. So that's yeah. just how you've always done it. Yeah, it's that it's a circle. Rim rim is a circle at the end of the day. So no matter where you shoot it, it's it's the same way. So I don't know, just it feels comfortable. That's pretty funny to me that you you didn't even realize you you were doing it that way. Have has anybody, has any coach ever asked you to 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 go back to the center? I mean, coaches here, they ask me in the summer why I'm doing it, but I'm making, I say, coach, don't worry about it. I'll make my shots. So 
no, nobody ever has said it anything, but I, all the fans every time be yelling. I I can hear it. I shoot the feet though on on the road, and they say go in, go to the middle, go to the middle. But well, you I, are shooting right now. I, let's see, I have Ken Palm up right now. Um, I can't remember if Ken Palm only shows the D1 games or if it shows all the games, but regardless, I'm I'm looking at 25 of 30, and that's 83.3% from the free throw line. You can stand wherever the hell you want if you're hitting 83% of your free throws. Yeah, that's that's what I tell coaches too. <laughs> <laughs> if uh do you remember? I mean, have have the fans ever said anything um interesting enough to you that, to remember, or is it just usually yeah, why are you doing that? Kind of just stupid right. fan stuff or anything good that you remember them saying? It's not, I mean, not really. I just, you know, when I shoot my feet, those, it's just a lot of noise. But sometimes I pick something up, something up. But I don't, you know, let it affect my game. I don't think about it too much, you know. You guys have not yet hit, Um, I mean, Moby Arena at Colorado State can, can be pretty um interesting. Uh, New Mexico State can be pretty interesting because of the rivalry. But both of those games you guys hit when the student sections weren't there. They were off campus. It was between semesters. Um, UNLV's crowd isn't exactly what it once was, although there were some a lot of students there. Air Force, the cadets, I don't think people realize this, actually. The, the cadets in that little section right by your guys' bench, they can they can get after you quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but you haven't hit one of the really big road environments yet in one of those student sections. Um, do you enjoy when students get after you like that, the opposing fans? Definitely, I do. I do. I I I don't do it like house, but you know, I <laughs> I talk my smack sometimes. But I like it. I think it's part of the game. I I you know, coming from Europe, fans be yelling all kind of stuff, you know, in the stands. So I'm just I'm just used to. It. I think it, it it brings the fun to the game. All right, let's kind of wrap up with some of this here. You you mentioned Jalen. I want to ask you about playing with some of these teammates because you 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 guys have a really unique team. First of all, you guys are playing really well right now. Again, as we record this on Monday, you guys are now a nationally ranked team. You guys are 25th in the country as of today. Um, you guys have a, a, a couple of guards. You, you have a, a sophomore guard in Donovan Dent who earlier this year was, was playing just – I said earlier this year, he's still playing very well. Um, a great passer. You have – a guy in a, a Jamal Mashburn Jr. who's who's a very good scorer, especially at the mid range, which not a lot of people do the mid range shot as much as him. And then you have Jalen House, who's just Jalen House. I mean, he does a lot of crazy things. So you have a lot of unique guys on the court around you. What's it like playing with this team? And and have you ever played with anybody like like a Jalen House? Um, it's 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 fun. It's fun. It's we just have so much different things, you know. It's it's hard for the other teams to adjust to everything because you know you can shot somebody down, but we don't have somebody else who can who won't get to the bucket or make shots. So it's definitely fun to play. You know, uh, don't put too much pressure on anybody on the team. And uh, I don't, I haven't really played with too many guys who uh, who play like our guards, you know, uh, or somebody like House. You know, but it's it's fun. It's you know. House gets the team fired up a lot of times, and stuff he says and does on the court it definitely makes me laugh. But, but yeah, it's you it's, ever it's, have to stop yourself and like, all right, I can't really laugh right. I don't want that. I don't want everyone else seeing me laugh. But like, it's funny what he does sometimes. It, it definitely is. Sometimes he does things he's not supposed to do, but of course, yeah. get mad at him. But it's you know, it is what it is. As long as it don't hurt the team and we keep winning, I don't mind it. Well, you guys are winning right now, um, three in a row, uh, playing pretty well. How much farther does this team have to go to to hit what you think it can be? Uh, as good as this team can be, are you guys close to it yet, or do you guys still have a ways to go? Uh, like we, we we do in practice, I think we get better every day in practice. Uh, I don't, I don't think we like offensively and defensively we are are there where we're supposed to be at. You know, we can flow a little bit better, play a little bit. You know faster get a little bit more steals and stops uh i think i think whenever we do that i think we're you know almost there but we can be we can be the best team in the country and i believe it you know so you're where you're supposed to be in january um you're not you're not a finished product that though no definitely it's a lot of teams you know they peak at january and then they go down uh but our goal is to play the best basketball in march so so i think that's that's the right track right now Awesome, man. Well, hey, look, I, I appreciate your time here. I appreciate you answering all, all the questions that we, we still keep asking you guys all over and over and over again. But uh, it's been a fun season so far. And uh, good luck, I guess, Wednesday night. And then this weekend, there's a big game for Lobo fans here that uh, that certainly know the 
opposing teams coaches. So you guys can worry about that after Wednesday and after San Jose sure. state, but um, you guys are playing well, man, you're playing well. So sure. thanks for your time. And uh, anything else you want to say to, to Lobo fans that might be watching? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thanks all the fans, you know, uh, it's been, it's been a blast. I have all of you in the pit. Hopefully it continues. We keep winning and we sell out to pay every game. Appreciate you, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care. All right, well, there you go. My conversation with Mustafa Anzil of the UNM Lobos, uh, the Dayton transfer from Finland, who has been playing just lights out, really, off the bench for the Lobos of late. Scored in double figures in six of his last eight games and four in a row in league play, which has not been done in two decades uh, at, off the bench for a UNM Lobo. Hope you enjoyed either watching or listening, however you got here to this podcast. Please uh, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff, but also Follow our coverage in the Albuquerque Journal. Uh, you can do it in print, obviously. That is what a newspaper still is. We still do uh, produce every single day a print product. But uh, online, you can subscribe. abqjournal.com, all our coverage. You can find it all there. Local journalism is important. Covering a team like the UNM Lobos only happens with your support and subscriptions to the print and digital product of abqjournal.com slash subscribe is how you can help support local journalism there. Um, hope you enjoy this every Tuesday. We're going to be coming out with the new episode of the Talking Grammar podcast. This was episode 76. Again, thank you to Mustafa Amzil and the UNM Lobos for, for letting a player come on the show. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think on X. I'm at Jeff Grammar, or you can email me ggrammar at abqjournal.com. And until next time, thanks for watching.